Welcome to another video of Dream Data. Today we're going to look into our performance reports. And this is the agenda. We will have a look at the key characteristics of the reports and what are the different types of reports that you can find under the performance section. We'll have a look at acquisition, content, paid, and organic. What is special about our performance reports? So performance reports, they come from a point of view where you spend a certain amount of money right now for campaigns and you'd like to understand, for example, how many, uh, what campaign is working and how many leads did we generate so far? And the key is directly set on so far. So these two keywords are quite important to understand because we're trying to look not backwards in history, but forward to understand what have we achieved. So basically these reports or all reports on our performance are mostly used to optimize go-to-market initiatives and to understand all the touches and events that led to, to generate a certain specific outcome. Let's have a look at how this looks within Dream Data Live. When you're logged in in your platform, this is the first place you would start on. We will navigate together now to performance and directly on our first report called acquisition. All reports under performance and also on the other sections have the same setup. You'll find on the top the filters. You will find a function to save the report in case you'd like to save those filters and review it to in another point of time. Otherwise, the filters that you have available are time, jumping between the stages, jumping between the attribution models, and then of course you are able to select certain channels, sources, certain campaigns that you might be looking for. You can also add further filters. For example, if you're trying to understand what device do people use mostly or user country or browser. Specifically, it's also quite helpful to group, uh, to group by channel and source or source or campaign. What does, us, what does us acquisition tell? So acquisition is telling you how many leads did you acquire for this year so far. We can see here, we have something it's called, depending on the stage that you're analyzing, it will either be called deals, opportunity, leads, prospects, depending on what you have set up. In this case, we're looking at deals. We can see we have 34 influence deals and we have 26 deals. Now you might be asking yourself, what number should I trust then? Is it 34 or is it 26? Truth is that deals, will change depending on the attribution model that you have applied. And because attribution means that we are attributing certain value to each and individual touch points, whenever we count those fractions of value together, that will attribute to those 26 deals in this case. But that also means that if we change the attribution model, the number will change. That is why we recommend to guide yourselves based on the influence deals. Because here we know that on 34 different customer journeys, we definitely have these channels having a touch point. So we'd like to understand now what exactly, what's the impact of these channels. And at the moment we are looking at the attribution model data driven. So further below, you'll be able to see here that based on this stage new business, that means for other customers close one, we already can see that paid emails have the biggest impact. It is not strange to see meetings and calls and emails for closed one stage, because that is mostly when you have already sales has been involved quite heavily and then the deal is being closed. But if you're analyzing earlier stages, such as generating leads, signups, you'll typically see paid 
uh, or potentially also organic um, direct as being the main channels that are generating leads. We recommend to look always at the table that we have below because this will give you much more information on exact amount of visitors, identified contacts, companies, and influence deals. Here again, you can see we have a round number for influence deals and a fraction for deals. We have connected the influence deals, companies and contacts with the journeys reports, which you will learn on another video. But this means that whenever you would like to analyze or investigate further, who are those influence deals? We recommend to click on the blue number and go further and investigate on the journeys. Further below, you will find a view of channel performance by influence deals over time. And that is pretty much it for the acquisition report. Content. Content is based on the settings that you have set up, basically mapping out your website. And here we are looking at what content is performing. How many views do we have? How many sessions? How many visitors do we have on your website? Like acquisition, you have up here your filters. Be aware, in this case, you do not have attribution filters in here. So we are not working with attribution on this report. We're trying to understand which pages are performing best. We recommend you to go to settings and set up your content if you haven't so, because th this will definitely um, affect the content categories that you can select. In order to analyze certain content categories, we recommend to click on it and then click on apply. Otherwise, your selection will not be it will not be reflected in the report. Like on the previous report, you have also the option to add other filters. To understand better where are people coming from and what pages are mostly visited, we recommend to look at secondary group by and then select, for example, channel source or source and campaign. The metric on the graphic can also be changed into show me views, sessions, visitors, contacts, and influence value if you want to. The story that's been told down here is basically, we have a certain amount of views on the content. We had sessions, visitors on your website. These are anonymous people. And then we identified a certain amount of contacts and a certain amount of companies. It shows you also the total amount of conversions and conversions is something that you can set up under settings to define what is a conversion to you. Is a conversion a sign up? Is a conversion a page view, a book a meeting? That depends on what you set up. But this will show you based on the pages, how many conversions did you had in one year basically, and then how many, uh, how many deals did the content influence? So we see here view group by over time. So we can see over time how the content has been um, developing. And down here, we can see the top 10 URLs that are working right now. By hovering with your mouse, you'll be able to discover how many come from direct, how many come from paid, um, organic. But we recommend you to look at way more data below by looking at performance group by channel and source. If you click here, the whole table will open up and you will see more data. Otherwise, if you just like to investigate on these 13 best performing pages, um, we recommend to simply look at this table by clicking on it, and then you'll be able to scroll. You can see here that we have something very specific that's called performance you'll be able to rearrange the single column by clicking on the title. And very key to understand here is a, an, an insufficient performing page is when it has below 250 sessions. A high performing page might have um, 
below 250, but, my, but the uh, key indicator here as well is to look at influence deals per sessions, the percentage. The higher the percentage, the better performing the pages. You will here see also conversion and conversion rate per page. If you'd like to investigate a bit further on the contacts, companies and influence deals, by clicking on the titles, you'll be able to download the list. Let's continue to paid. Paid, uh, the reports on the paid are based on all ad networks. So you'll find a total overview, cost overview, return on ad spend, and these are all the ad networks that you have integrated with the system. Let's investigate on return on ad spend. Return on ad spend will give you the overview. And it's basically the same setup. We have our filters. We have again attribution setup. And now we're looking at how much did we spend? How many impressions did we generate? Clicks, visitors on our website, identified contacts and companies and how many leads were influenced. And then again, in this case, leads or deals. And then based on the attribution model, it accounts for 4.9 deals. The data below um, above here comes directly from, from all the ad networks and contacts and companies and visitors that comes from our, track, um, our tracking. Sorry. So we can see here G2 is performing quite well in our example, but in order to analyze a bit further, I recommend to go down to add network performance table. And then again, you're able to navigate in the table, click on the title if you'd like to see more information. If you'd like to export data, click on the wheel, and then you'll be able to export the data. This is possible for all uh, business customers and team customers. If you'd like to understand a bit further, like how is Google performing in general, then we recommend to go to paid and then directly into, for example, Google search ads. This will tell you a similar story, funnel story, starting up by how much that did you spend? How many impressions and click did, did this generate? How many visitors did you then had on the website? contacts identified in companies, and then go down to explain you how many influence deals do you have and how much for how many deals would that account for if we are considering the data attribution model. So based on group by, which you can always change to go to ad group, keyword, bid strategy, depending on what it is that you'd like to analyze, um, you can see down below then the best performing campaigns and as usual, a table that you can analyze further with impression share, cost per click and so on um, in order to understand which campaign is performing best and where you might be investing maybe too much. How many leads did it generate? We recommend to export the data if you'd like to work with color coding or report on other platforms. Further below, you'll find the whole thing over time. And down here, the uh, most searched terms, uh, keywords, and how much, how many impressions do, did those keywords actually generate. Last but not least, organic. Organic is divided into SEO, Google search, and social media. If we go to Google search, We'll have basically group by landing page, landing page content, user, country, and device. And it is basically the same setup as we saw before under paid. You'll have the best working URLs. And then down here, again, a table that explains a bit more in detail how many impressions and clicks did each URL generate. Further below, you'll also find the query performance, which is the keywords, 
what is it that people mostly search when they look for your product organically? Social media is not directly integrated, but through our tracking, we are able to tell where are people coming from, from which different social media channels are people landing on your website, and thus we'll be able to tell you which social media platform is working best. That is it for performance. Thank you so much for listening. If you have questions, please do reach out either to support or directly to your CSM. Thank you so much.